Okay, this will be a different kind of video. I usually do modding tutorials and general Windows help, but I'm also a big computer enthusiast, and this stuff is awesome. So there was a big leak yesterday about AMD's upcoming Ryzen, the Zen CPUs to combat Intel's KV Lake stuff. And look at this from an online retailer. You can find this information. And this begs the question, is AMD leaking this on purpose for our attention? Because they're sure as hell getting a lot of attention. Or is this just a leak by an employee? I'm, I'm pretty sure this is just AMD leaking it themselves because there is a huge amount of hubbub about this. And now you'll see why I'm so excited. Look at this. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, so if you watch the Zen reveal event, they showed off a octa-core processor with 16 threads combating the i7-16900K, which is the Broadwell E equivalent of the 5960X from Haswell E. Look at this. So you can see here, the this is the flagship chip, the i7-1800X. We can only assume that this is what they showed off in the tech demo. Um, it's a pretty safe bet that they showed it off. 8 cores, 16 threads, 3 to 3.6 gigahertz boost, based then boost. And then its comparable part is the i7-1600K. If you watch the presentation, the AMD chip beat the Intel chip by about 5 to 10% in the benchmarks, although they showed synthetic benchmarks and they also showed Battlefield 1. So, looks very looks very promising. And then you fall down the line in the skews here, and you'll see that there are a fair amount of 8 core 16 thread chips. Like this the R7-1700X octa core 16 thread, it's supposed to combat the 7700K or the 6800K, which is the hexa core chip on the enthusiast lineup. If this is actually 8 physical cores and 16 threads, functions properly and has the advertised clock speed here and is unlocked multiplier like an AMD is saying man that this is going to be a gigantic uppercut to Intel why on earth would you buy the one point one thousand dollar sixteen hundred K when you can spend a lot less and when I say a lot less I mean look at this three hundred and twenty dollars three hundred dollars this is for the 1700 the 1800 X is rumored to be about 490 and the chip below the um, 1700 X I'm not too sure about that one I think 350 something like that it's, it's somewhere in between here we go so you can see here the Ryzen 7 1800X, which, if you want to think about it, R7, R5, R3, reminds you of Intel's core lineup, sort of. And you see here, 8 cores, 16 threads, 95 watt TDP. Note that the TDP is not the same amount of power draw. So, you could say that this chip has a 95 watt TDP, but in reality, it could draw, I don't know more than 150 watts. I'm not too sure. Now base clock versus the boost clock. So base clock is what it does out of the box. So 4790K my rig over here. Um, base clock of 4 gigahertz and then boost clock of 4.4. .4. So if you're not doing something too demanding it may it'll sit around the base clock or maybe clock lower to save power and output less heat. If you're doing something demanding, like say a render test or a game, it'll turbo up itself and go to a higher clock speed to perform better. So you can see here the R7 1800X with a price of roughly $500, US dollars, I should say. Now the 1800 is still to be determined, to be announced. The R7 1700X, which looks like a pretty awesome deal, and considering that these have unlocked multipliers, which means I could I could overclock the R7 1700X 
to the same clock speed as the 1800X, I'm not sure if there's going to be a difference in the IPC or instructions per clock. So if the 1800X does more instructions per clock than the 1700X does, that means you'd have to clock the 1700X higher to match its performance or get closer to it. My assumption is that the the IPC will be the same along the board, usually like that with architectures, and my guess is that we'll see the 1800X with more cache. Maybe 25, 20 megabytes of cache, that's what it seems to be. And then it'll step down in cache as you go down the line from the CPUs from top to bottom. And this looks like a really awesome bargain, look at this thing. AMD Ryzen 7, 1700. Oh man, 8 core, 16 thread, 65 watt TDP with an undetermined base but a clock speed 3.7 gigahertz at $319. And if we go over here, let's see, pretty crazy, huh? Well, this one says 3.8 gigahertz, but it's indeterminate at this point. Huh. Yep, and we can see more info about that chip right here. 8 core, 16 thread, 3.7 gigahertz. Unlimited boost frequency depending on the cooling you have. So one of the features of Zen slash Ryzen was depending on the cooling you have. So if you have like a heatsink cooler, like a 212 Evo, it's not going to go up as high as it would on like an EK Predator or a custom loop. And it's really nice that the CPU will clock itself up and down depending on your needs. 14 nanometer production process, so we expect lots of level 1 cache, and wow, that is a large amount of level 3 cache. You'll see on stuff like the, as an example, the Core i7 4790K, 6700K, and I believe the i7 7700K all have 8 megabytes of level 3 cache on the chip. If this chip, which costs less than the i7, has twice as many cores, twice as many threads, and a little bit lower clock speed, and less power requirements. If this has 16 megs of cache, that's double the cache. It's ridiculous. Oh, man. See, with the CPU, I'm not the best when it comes to the cache of a CPU. Think of it as really, really high-speed storage. So if you're running lots of instruction sets, the larger the cache you have, that means the more instruction sets you can store in it. Like th think of it as a frame buffer for a graphics card. So if your graphics card has 8 gigabytes of video RAM or VRAM, the frame buffer, and you already have, I don't know, 100 4K frames in it for the next two seconds of your gameplay, think of that with a CPU's cache. You're storing those instructions in there, and that's a heavily watered down description of it. And there's also some power efficiency features there, and there's also talk about the AMD's, uh, what can I say, the Wraith cooler. The cooler that came bundled with the uh, FX8350. And this, this looks amazing. Look at this. They also have hexacores with 12 threads, and then quad cores with eight threads. And considering this range, now, I hope that it'll actually perform as advertised. Like the R7 1800X is on par with the 6900K. Because if that's true, man, this will be a big blow to Intel. Rightfully so, considering the CPU market seems to have stagnated recently with AMD being out of the picture for a while, working on Zen. FX9590 has been out for a long time, so they haven't done too much in the CPU market for PC enthusiasts. They've worked on the consoles, they've worked on other projects. But, man, this is really exciting. I'll put both the links in the description. Thank you for watching, and if you're like me, I don't favor Intel or AMD, AMD or NVIDIA. I, I'm not a fanboy. I, I want the best performance for, do, for, for my dollar, and I want what will suit my needs. That's what I'm gunning for. 
I'm not going to say, oh, well, I bought this card because of the company. I don't care. The things that make me choose a chip or a card is the driver support, say operating system support if you're talking about a CPU, clock speed, temperature, power, stuff like that. Now, anyway, have a nice day, and this will shake up the CPU market. It's really nice. Thank you for watching.